In 2281, a small gambling town on the dusty I-15 was in chaos. Escaped convicts from a nearby prison had recently arrived and captured the east side of town, leaving the peaceful townspeople in fear for their lives. On the west side of the highway, a tiny force of soldiers could do little more than watch, as they were woefully unequipped to do anything to help. I'm Nero's Luke Cartographer, and this is the story of Prim Nevada. We'll start this with an examination of the sites surrounding Prim in the Fallout universe and in the real world. We'll then move into the layout of the town in the Fallout universe and how it compares to the town in the real world. We'll examine the history of Prim in the Fallout universe and a brief history of Prim in the real world. We'll then close with some notes that I have on the topic. With that said, let's get started. In the Fallout universe, Prim lies south-southwest of the Las Vegas Strip, towards the southwestern end of the version of the Mojave that we get to explore in Fallout New Vegas. To the north of town, the Good Springs water source serves as the outer limits of the nearby town of Good Springs. Just east of there, the runway of Gene skydiving has been swallowed by the sands of the desert that surrounds it. Northeast of Prim, the New California Republic Correctional Facility, or NCRCF, has been taken over by its inmates. The escaped convicts, known as Powder Gangers, have poured out into the wasteland, establishing four satellite camps around their former prison. Over the hills east of Prim, the old emergency service rail yard has fallen into disrepair. Up the hill past the rail yard lies Prim Pass, a narrow gorge that connects Prim's Valley to the valley to the east. Just past this pass lies a small dwelling known as Harper's Shack and the Deathclaw Nest known as Deadwind Cavern. Southeast of Prim, the Prospector's Den, once a refuge for scavengers, has been captured by the Jackals Gang. Nearby Jackrabbit Springs has become one of the homes of the hideous mutants known as Centaurs. Farther southeast, a coyote den cuts into the hillside along the railroad track. South of Prim, an old Nevada highway patrol station has been taken over by the Jackals Gang. Southeast of there, the Ivanpah racing track lies on the surface of the Ivanpah dry lake bed. At the intersection of I-15 and Nipton Road lies the Nipton Road rest stop. Halfway from I-15 to Nipton, on Nipton Road, lies the Nipton Road pit stop where the Jackals have set an ambush. On the southwestern edge of Prim lies the California Sunset Drive-In. Up the hills to the southwest lies the Rad Scorpion infested Mesquite Mountains campsite. To the north of the campsite lies radioactive Mesquite Mountains Crater. West of Prim, the canyon wreckage blocks the path to the tear in the earth known as the Divide. Northwest of Prim, the trailer belonging to Lone Wolf Radio sits empty in the hills. Let's now compare the locations of real-world sites that can be found in the game with their locations in-game. We'll start with municipalities and facilities and then cover natural sites. Gene, Nevada, represented to the north-northeast in-game by Gene Skydiving, is found a little over 12 miles north-northeast of Prim in the real world. Good Springs, Nevada, found north-northwest of Prim in-game, is found approximately 15 miles north-northwest of Prim in real life. While the New Vegas Strip can be found north-northeast of Prim in-game, the heart of the real-world Las Vegas Strip is found approximately 36 miles northeast of Prim. Nipton, California, found southeast of Prim in-game, lies about 12 miles south-southeast of Prim in real life. The NCRCF, found northeast of Prim in-game, is a representation of the real-world Gene Conservation Camp, a women's minimum security prison that lies approximately 12 miles northeast of Prim. The real-world Ivanpah Solar Electric Generating System, found approximately 6 miles southwest of Prim, likely has an in-game counterpart in the Helios 1 solar power plant found east-northeast of Prim in-game. Aforementioned Jackrabbit Spring, found southeast of Prim in-game, is potentially a representation of the real-world Jackrabbit Spring, found approximately 78 miles northwest of Prim, in the same Ash Meadows wilderness that is host to the Devil's Hole. The Mesquite Mountains Campsite and Mesquite Mountain Crater, found southwest of Prim in-game, are likely meant to be representations of the real-world Mesquite Wilderness area, 14 miles west of real Prim. The Ivanpah Dry Lake Bed, found south of Prim in-game, is also found south of Prim in the real world, and both have an old racetrack on them. With the sites around Prim covered, let's consider the layout of the town itself. In the real world, Prim lies in a valley at the north end of the Ivanpah Dry Lake, at the intersection of I-15 and Prim Boulevard. The town is primarily wrapped around I-15. In-game, the town also lies on I-15, but while the in-game road that crosses I-15 runs over the interstate highway, in the real world this road runs under it. While in the real world there are two other bridges connecting the two halves of the town together, a monorail bridge and a footbridge, in the game there's only the road bridge. Both in-game and in the real world, there's a rail line running north and south east of town. 
Real World Prim is primarily composed of three casino resorts, a mall, and an apartment complex for the workers. The in-game town is composed of two casinos, a gas station, a water tower, a playground, ten brick-and-mortar structures, and seven homes, of which four are still habitable. In recent years, a Mojave Express office has been opened in one of those brick-and-mortar structures, and a pair of shacks have been constructed for the sheriff and his deputy. The recently arrived NCR forces have established a small campsite on the west side of town and a guard post adjacent to the bridge over I-15. The in-game Bison Steve is likely a representation of Buffalo Bill's resort and casino, both based on the names of the sites and the fact that they're both home to roller coasters. The Vicky and Vance is likely a representation of the Prim Valley Casino Resorts, as the real site is home to the Bonnie and Clyde Death Car, while the in-game version is home to the Vicky and Vance Death Car. While the real-world worker housing is on the east side of town, the houses in-game are on the south side. With that said, let's get into the history of the site in the Fallout universe. Before the Great War, Prim appears to have had much of the same history as it has in the real world. We'll cover that shortly, but broad strokes, it was a gambling town on the border with California. When the Great War came, much of the Mojave was spared direct nuclear strikes thanks to the ingenuity and largesse of Robert House. While his missile defense managed to swat 68 of the 77 warheads targeted at the Mojave, nine made it through, including the one that landed west of Prim at the Mesquite Mountains Crater. In the years immediately following the war, Prim was likely deserted thanks to the nearby detonation and the complete collapse of the tourism industry. But over the years, people began to filter back in. It seems likely that the true rejuvenation of Prim started around 2274 when the New California Republic seized the Hoover Dam and began to annex the Mojave. A trade route from New Vegas to the heartland of the NCR was established along the Long 15, and the tourism industry returned to Prim. The main draw of Prim was the Vicky and Vance Casino. Not only a place to gamble, but a tourist attraction as well. At the heart of the gambling floor sat the death car of the eponymous Vicky and Vance, with the robot Prim Slim standing by to give detailed information on the lives of this criminal couple in the vein of Bonnie and Clyde. Across the street from the Vicky and Vance, the Mojave Express delivery service opened an office. This office is run by Johnson Nash and his wife Ruby, who, by 2281, had been in Prim for eight years. Across the street from both the Vicky and Vance and the Mojave Express station, the Bison Steve once operated as a hotel, but the manager, Lori, has left Prim in recent months. In 2281, the town was under the protection of Sheriff McBain and his deputy, Beagle. Despite this, the Vicky and Vance casino was clandestinely robbed by Sammy and Pauline Wins, who stole Vicky's and Vance's hats and Vance's submachine gun from the display case. This act of thievery was eclipsed in September 2281 by the arrival of murderous armed escaped convicts from the Northeast. Since 2271 at the latest, the New California Republic had been interested in annexing the Mojave and reaping the resources therein. The Republic's interest in the region had not been uncontested, and in 2277 they had fought a major battle with Caesar's Legion an empire of slaves that controlled much of the old American Southwest. The Battle of Hoover Dam was nearly lost to the waves of poorly armed but numerically superior legionnaires. The NCR was overstretched in their efforts to bring the Mojave to heel. To bring more troops and supplies to the front more quickly, the NCR sought to repair the antique rail lines that connected Vegas to their territory. To complete this work, the Republic brought in their own slave labor, criminals arrested from across their territory. The convicts were housed in a refurbished pre-war prison the NCR called the New California Republic Correctional Facility. The inmates were taken out on work details where they were overseen by guards and then were brought back to their housing at the NCRCF. While this setup worked for a time, problems both internal and external conspired to bring it all to ruin. Inside, prisoners stole explosives and improvised weapons from their job sites, while at NCR High Command, General Lee Oliver pulled more and more guards away to serve at the front. Soon there were too few guards to too many prisoners. The breakout was rapid and deadly. While some convicts stayed at the prison intent on using it as a fortress from which to raid the Mojave, others fanned out, including a party that made a beeline for Prim. Arriving in the darkness of night, the escaped convicts murdered Sheriff McBain and his wife as they slept. They then took over the town and set themselves up in the Bison Steve Hotel. When they became aware of the breakout, the NCR sent a squad to watch the site. 
Headed by Lieutenant Hayes and Sergeant McGee, this party arrived in Prim and set up a camp on the west side of I-15. Though they were dramatically outnumbered by the escaped Khans, they managed to maintain this position, and with it, the safety of I-15 south of Prim. It was around this time that a strange party of men arrived, some great Khans, and a man in a daisy suit. Deputy Beagle, who had been spared the initial slaughter, watched this meeting and recorded the gist of what he had overheard. After this, the man in the daisy suit and his great Khan entourage left Prim and headed south. A few days later, the town was visited by another outsider, a former courier for the Mojave Express. The courier had been hired to carry a platinum chip to the Lucky 38 Casino on the New Vegas Strip. They had made it to Good Springs before they were ambushed by the man in the daisy suit and his great cons. Robbed of their package, they were shot in the head and buried in a shallow grave within the Good Springs Cemetery. Miraculously, they had survived this attempted murder and were now hunting down the man responsible, both to reclaim the platinum chip and to make him pay. After encountering a few of the unfriendly convicts, the courier made their way into the Vicky and Vance Casino, where most of the town's remaining citizens were held up. Here, Johnson Nash explained their situation, and that if the courier wanted information on the man in the daisy suit, that they would have to rescue Deputy Beagle, who had been recently captured and was being held in the Bison Steve. The courier successfully infiltrated the old hotel, and after battling the escaped cons, they rescued Deputy Beagle. The deputy told the courier all that he had overheard in the conversation. The man in the daisy suit was headed south to Nipton, then up to Novak. With his information in hand, the courier departed, continuing their hunt for their attempted murderer. Though they departed Prim at this time, they returned to the town to sort out other business. The following is a list of potentially canonical actions taken by the courier in Prim. Should the courier have taken an interest in the inactive iBot on the counter of the Mojave Express station, they might have taken the time to repair it and in the process received its aid. Known as EDE, this iBot could potentially have served as a useful companion to the courier. Should the courier have gone to work for the boss of the powder gangers at the NCRCF, they might have come to Prim seeking intel on the NCR's plans for the old prison. At this point, they may have either chosen to help the powder gangers maintain their freedom, or helped the NCR to put them down. Should the courier have returned to the Vicky and Vance Casino after putting down the escaped convicts, they may have been a target of the NCR deserters led by Layla. Layla and her deserters had fled the front with the plan of making a bunch of money in New Vegas and opening a ranch somewhere. When they lost their money, they came to Prim because they heard that the sheriff was dead and they hoped to rob the community. The courier could have talked them down, paid them off, or killed them to keep the community safe. Should the courier have taken an interest in helping Prim more than in their initial work to put down the escaped convicts, then they may have returned to help them to find a new sheriff. There were three potential options for this post. Myers, Sergeant McGee, and Prim Slim. Should the courier have chosen Myers, the former sheriff incarcerated within the NCRCF for the job, they first would have had to have traveled to the Mojave Outpost. There, they would have attained a pardon for the disgraced sheriff from Major Knight after which Myers would be free to become the Sheriff of Prim. Under Sheriff Myers, Johnson Nash would have been able to offer his goods at a lower price. Alternatively, should the courier have chosen to vest the powers of the Sheriff and the NCR, they would have traveled to the Mojave Outpost. Once there, they would have to have convinced Major Knight to dispatch additional forces to Prim, at which point Lieutenant Hayes would have the forces necessary to protect Prim. Prim would then have been placed under martial law, with Sergeant McGee as the sheriff. The residents would have become citizens of the NCR, and while Johnson Nash would have a larger selection to offer, he would also have to charge higher rates in order to pay NCR taxes. Lastly, should the courier have chosen Prim Slim for the job, they would have to hack the robot's protocols or rewire some of its systems with three fission batteries. Regardless of the chosen sheriff, Deputy Beagle would be out of a job, and generally upset with the courier. Should the courier have noticed that Vance's gun was stolen from the display, they could have checked with Prim Slim, and discovered that the robot had been hacked. Slim would have subsequently handed over a transcript of a recording of the perpetrators, which would have led the courier to the outskirts of Westside, New Vegas. Here they would have found Sammy and Pauline Wins, a pair of fools attempting to become famous criminals. Having stolen Vicky and Vance's hats and Vance's gun, they were planning on robbing the casinos of the Strip with a single 9mm submachine gun. Should the courier have tracked them down, they may have convinced the Winds to abandon their folly and taken the gun from them. Or they may have gunned them down and taken the gun and their stolen hats. Should the courier have chosen to chat with Ruby Nash, she would have brought their attention to her Rad Scorpion Venom casserole. After this, the courier could have exchanged Rad Scorpion stingers for her casseroles. Should the courier have returned to the casino after having cleared out the convicts and after having found the new sheriff, they would have found the reopened Vicky and Vance Casino. 
If after this they had gambled and won excessively at the Vicky and Vance, they could have been banned from gambling there again. Lastly, if the courier had visited the nearby prospector's den and killed off the Jackal's gang members inside, the site would have again found life as a den for prospectors. Alright, that said, let's get into the history of Prim in the real world. I've covered the geological and Native American history of this chunk of Nevada in my video on Good Springs, so we're going to jump right into the more modern history starting in the mid to late 19th century. In those days, this part of Nevada was home to many mines. Though Prim itself was never a mining town, it's surrounded by deserted mining ghost towns and one mining town that survives to this day, Good Springs. Prim itself has its origins as a small desert community on a highway with a gas station. The owner of the gas station was the cantankerous Pete McIntyre. Mr. McIntyre made ends meet during Prohibition by distilling whiskey in mountain caves in the area, and was thus nicknamed Whiskey Pete. The first casino in Prim opened in 1977 and was named the Whiskey Pete's Hotel and Casino in honor of Pete McIntyre. In 1990, the Primadonna Casino Resorts, eventually renamed Prim Valley Resort, was opened across the highway by Ernest Prim. Over the next few years, Buffalo Bill's Resort and Casino was constructed next door to the Primadonna. In the process of building this resort, the workers accidentally dug up Whiskey Pete's unmarked grave. I've read that he was reburied in one of those caves where he used to brew his moonshine. When the Buffalo Bill opened, one of its attractions included the Desperado, one of the tallest roller coasters in the world, if not the tallest at the time. The 1990s also brought the Bonnie and Clyde death car to Prim, where it has served as an attraction for over 20 years. In the mid-1990s, Whiskey Pete's was connected to the Prim Valley Resort by a single car monorail over I-15. In 1996, it truly became Prim when the name was changed from State Line to avoid confusion with State Line Nevada, found on the southeastern shore of Lake Tahoe. The first mall, Fashion Outlets of Las Vegas, was opened in Prim in 1998. In 2004, the Desert Oasis apartment complex was constructed for the use of the casino resort workers. The Great Recession of 2008 hit all recreational businesses hard, and the casinos of Prim were not spared the damage. While the community did recover over the next decade, it was again hit hard by the COVID pandemic of 2020. At that time, the Buffalo Bill Casino Resort shut down for refurbishment. Though the hotel and casino reopened in December 2022, the Desperado roller coaster remains closed as of June 2023, at least as far as I can tell. Though the past couple of decades have been rough on Prim, the locals remain positive about the future. Two potential bright spots on the horizon include the proposed Southern Nevada Airport, located in the Ivanpah Valley, and a high-speed rail line which has been proposed to run from Victor Valley, California to Las Vegas, passing through Prim and its potential new airport. Alright, that pretty much covers what I found on Real World Prim, so let's get to my notes on the topic. First, when doing the research for this video, I put a circle on the map around Prim to see what sites I would cover as a nearby. Then I set out to get footage on these sites and revisit them so that I would have something to say about them. As I approached a dead wind cavern, I had this feeling of dread, as though I was about to break a taboo. I remembered dying here at some point in the past and deciding never to come back, but I couldn't remember why. Upon stepping into the cavern, I was immediately killed by death claws, and it all came flooding back. The last time I'd been here was in my first playthrough all the way back in 2010. I had stepped into the cave and been killed immediately, and resolved never to return, and I hadn't until last week. I found 14 death claws in the cave in all. The reward for braving the space? Mercy. Mercy, the automatic grenade launcher that is. The weapon can be found next to the corpse of a dead, unnamed paladin of the Brotherhood of Steel. While the ammo for this weapon isn't cheap, it's really fun to shoot. Second, according to the wiki, Prim Pass may be an in-game version of the real-world McCullough Pass. While this might be accurate, as I couldn't confirm it, I chose to leave it out of the narrative. Just to show you why I had reservations about this, if we look at the map, you can see that McCullough Pass is fairly far to the north of Prim. Well, in-game, the site sits almost directly east. Third, the Nevada Highway Patrol Station is in California. Prim lies right on the Nevada side of the California-Nevada border. Because of this, the town is home to both gambling, legal in Nevada and illegal in California, and the lottery, legal in California and illegal in Nevada. Despite this fact, there is a Nevada Highway Patrol Station on I-15 south of Prim in California. Fourth, though ostensibly both the Vicky and Vance and Bison Steve were casinos before the bombs, only the Vicky and Vance appears to have reopened as such, with the Bison Steve containing no gambling equipment. Fifth, you don't actually have to talk to Deputy Beagle to get the information on Benny and his great con followers. You can also listen to his journal, either by pickpocketing it from him or killing him. Sixth, if you chose Myers or McGee to become the Sheriff of Prim, Johnson Nash has new dialogue about what has changed in Prim. 
For some reason, he doesn't have anything to say if Prim Slim becomes sheriff. Seventh, the main door to the Vicky and Vance doesn't make any sense. On the exterior of the Vicky and Vance casino, there's a main door that's been boarded up, so characters come and go from the side door. On the interior, there's no way to get to the boarded up main door. There's just a wall there and no sign that this was something altered in the post-war era. Lastly, I have a couple of things on Vicky and Vance. First, they aren't the Fallout Universe's version of Bonnie and Clyde. Both couples appear to have existed in the Fallout Universe. Instead, we're looking at a knockoff Bonnie and Clyde. While Bonnie and Clyde robbed banks and killed at least 12 people, Vicky and Vance shoplifted, cashed fraudulent checks, and drove off from gas stations without paying. The gun stolen by the winds was never even fired. Second, the plaque talking about the gun has some of my favorite text in Fallout New Vegas. It claims that experts say that though the gun was never fired, had Vance unpacked it, loaded it, and fired it with pinpoint accuracy, he could have killed as many as 50 people, maybe more if he had more ammunition and reloaded. Alright, I think that'll do it for the story of what happened to Prim. If you want to receive notifications when I launch lore videos, you can follow me on Twitter at GamingWithMaps. I opened my channel's Discord to the public. If you're interested in discussing Fallout lore, announcements on upcoming content, or voting on the next lore video, come on by. There's a link in the channel's banner. I stream on YouTube Friday evenings at 6pm Central. If you're interested, come check it out. If you appreciate what I do here and you want to support the channel financially, you can become a patron with Patreon. I want to thank my patrons Mesothelioma, 76 of Texas, Dark Malcontent, Real76, Dr. Orion, Samsung Smartfridge, Knight Spearhead, and Ahotep for their support. This has been the Irresolute Cartographer. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again next time.